Thank you all for joining. Uh, I'm Armand Rusta from Blue Liner. Uh, been at this for quite some time and um, just thought this would be a good opportunity. And it's something we're doing more and more here uh, as an agency, just really looking to share knowledge, share knowledge with small business owners, larger companies, entrepreneurs. We, we love working with growing businesses um, in this particular space of medical tourism. We spent the last 10 years helping to launch what is now one of the preeminent medical tourism destinations, of facilities, hospitals in the world uh, by the name of Health City uh, in the Cayman Islands. Through that experience and our previous experience working with other uh, doctors, healthcare providers, and tourism agencies, uh, companies, everything from airlines to hotels to actual destinations, countries, governments, uh, we've really gathered a lot of experience in both of these areas, and we're here today to share some nuggets and snippets of um, of what we've seen and what we've put together as best practices uh, in in the space, in really these combined industries, uh, tourism and, and wellness slash healthcare. So uh, let's dive right in. I have a deck, again, a deck that we'll happily share with whoever's interested. You could You could DM you know, myself or, or any members of our team. We also have our VP of sales, Steve Powell, um, available, you know, through LinkedIn or through email. You can find us uh, and or just DM in the uh, in the comments there and we'll, we'll share this deck with you. So what we'll do here today, uh, best practices in medical tourism marketing, it's, it's, a, it's a big one. Uh, we probably would have to have a whole course for like a whole semester to share everything. So my aim and goal today uh, is to really just give some high level points uh, and show you how we go about and have gone about uh, as we've worked with different companies and, and particularly for Health City, because you know there is a difference between you know a um, a hospital or a doctor that might want to accept patients from from out of their main territory and an operation that's built entirely for medical tourism, right? And, and we looked um, quite a bit at all the other competitors in the region, so to speak, that are accessible from, from the US, let's say. Uh, and a lot of them are in the, the, in the Caribbean, uh, in, in Latin America. Uh, some people will travel as far as you know India or Thailand or or, or wherever or wherever it takes, especially if, uh, based on the seriousness of of the condition or whatever um, you know the health care issue is. Is it life or death, or is it something cosmetic like dentistry or other kinds of uh, cosmetic services? So, you know, the term medical tourism really can applies to a lot of a lot of uh, a broad range of different types of um, procedures and types of healthcare. Uh, so that all, all, all comes into play based on where you're coming from. Uh, let's, um, you know, again, I uh, gave a little bit about Blue Liner's background without going through this whole uh, content piece here. Uh, you, can, you can see uh, who we are, where we've been, that we've been doing it for over two decades. Uh, we don't exclusively work in, in healthcare. We like to use the term wellness because that and on, covers you know, alternative forms of health and homeopathic and acupuncture and that whole space, which, which I'm a huge fan of and believe is a very effective uh, whole area within healthcare. So we do a lot with, with that as well as tourism, which is a fantastic space to work in. So um, we've been doing it um, and you can see on the side, some of the services uh, that we offer and some of the particular specialty areas within healthcare uh, that we also uh, cover and and uh, work with our clients on. So that's the Blue Liner team. If you know me, you know everything goes through the seven pillars uh, modality and model. It's it's uh, what is the seven pillars? It's a framework. It's a way to analyze and understand where you're at, where your business is at, and we can we can meet with. Google and Facebook on their marketing and put them through a seven pillars analysis, as well as a pure startup that's just conceiving and bringing their idea to light. The seven pillars framework it kind of sits above all of that as kind of an objective way to look at 
whatever it is you're doing and your team is doing well, what they're not doing well. And uh, that's the beginning point of charting a strategy towards um, making an improvement or reaching a new goal or launching a new product. So what you'll see today as we do the analysis of, of some particular um, healthcare uh, companies um, and we break down their marketing, we're always using this framework because it, it, it really uh, helps with, with the science and the art of, um, of marketing strategy. We use a, a, a visual kind of a, a visual uh, approach uh, called the matrix. And, and it's basically a way to map. It's the matrix. The best way to uh, describe it is it's a map. Or as we say here, a, a multidimensional chessboard uh, that enables marketers, entrepreneurs, investors, project teams to really visualize who's working on what who's in charge of the different areas, the different tactical and strategic areas, what are, what are the goals uh, for, for those areas and for the marketing and the business overall, and, and then how are we doing? Uh, very importantly, how are we doing and, and where can we improve? And that's, again, what you're about to see here as we objectively break down three companies that, uh, disclaimer, that we don't work for. We're looking at these particular hospitals and health providers in light of and on behalf of our clients to say, hey, what are they doing well? How can we, how can we understand where we stand in relation to them uh, and others? And of course, every organization has different budgets, different resources. Um, and I always say, you know, when we're coming up with goals, for a, a project, it's very important to be realistic and, and, and pair those goals to the, the I, right? The goals is the R, the return on investment, the ROI, the I is the budget. And uh, you know, you've, those things have to go hand in hand. So we looked at three um, organizations. This was an, an analysis from, it's a, a not too dated within the last 12 months, let's say. So, um, you know, again, um, for these particular companies um, that we'll cover, um, if they've made some improvements in the last few months that won't be covered here, uh, hopefully if anyone from the agencies or the organizations that we'll be discussing uh, is on the line or, or gets a, gets a look at this presentation. Uh, a, hopefully it can be helpful to you in terms of a constructive critical analysis. And B, if, if you've already looked at those things and made the improvements, uh, apologies, and, and please let us know. And we'd be happy to do a follow-up to show how you've looked at an issue. It's again, it's, it's, it's like healthcare, right? This diagnostic, um, you look at it, if there's issues, there's a, um, a prescription. And if the prescription's followed, there's an improvement, you know, in, in the outcome. So as you can see, marketing uh, in general and, and uh, business uh, growth works very similar to, to wellness and healthcare in terms of, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you take the advice and implement it well, um, you get a good result. So let's take a look. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we looked at uh, Baptist uh, Health in South Florida. And uh, you can see we give them rankings. And again, in general, as far as marketing overall, then across some of the specific pillars, we know within the seven pillars framework. Um, so as you could see here, um, looking at the website in particular, uh, and I could also pop open the websites as we go through this, but first I'd just like to go through the deck. Uh, simple, comprehensive, easy to navigate, engaging, uh, leveraging technology for a better patient experience by using apps, which is a big, huge trend uh, in in not just you know, medical tourism, but just uh, healthcare in general, uh, combining the strategy for how patients could engage um, their services, their um, whether they're a new patient or whether they're trying to manage their existing uh, relationship with with a healthcare provider. It's a combination of website, account, and apps that does that. Uh, and then good, good creativity and uh, an and accessible website as well. Really positive on website content. It's always a hard 
thing to do, content management, and particularly for, for healthcare. And then, you know, medical tourism adds another layer because there's all types of content about not just how to book the service, but how to get here, depending on the travel. So, you know, a bit of this kind of concierge concept comes into play. You really have to handhold um, patients and prospective customers through, through your content. Uh, so it's not just about volumes of content, it's about quality. And in this case, uh, Baptist also has a, a podcast, another very popular trend, uh, which which has uh, good good ratings and reviews, um, which is again good for branding, good for ongoing engagement, medical health advice, uh, whether or not you're actually booking a an appointment with them to depend on those providers and their doctors for ongoing advice. Uh, about one's health is a great strategy. It's like the very top of the funnel, as we'd call it in marketing. It doesn't mean you're getting revenue from that um, from that group, but it means that they're depending on your your thought leadership, which is very important when we look at a content, which is pillar one uh, in the system. The first thing we look at in in marketing, uh, and the most important, I would say, because all the other pillars like SEO and social media all play off of content. So content uh, is, is still king. And Baptist does a good job at that. Um, design and user experience of the website. Again, you know, good navigation, features like web chat, uh, which is could be annoying from a provider side to make sure you staff web chat, but it's it's um People have questions. There's a lot of information on pages. It's good to have that as a, as a plug-in, as an add-on to be able to engage people as they're browsing the information uh, on, on a website. And then, of course, good quality calls to action uh, is vital as well. And, um, you know, these guys did pretty, pretty good on that front. Now, moving into uh, the third pillar, again, pillar one, content, pillar two, design, UX, we covered that in the web and now the third pillar uh, of organic search. Um, and this is just, there's a lot of tools out there. Um, there's some free tools, um, some paid tools, really the top end um, conductor and bright edge are, are in the top end. Um, so th there's so many, if you're interested in, in looking at an SEO tool, you can again, DM me on the side here if you uh, on LinkedIn, if you want to put, a comment uh, in the in the chat for the event, uh, or just you know shoot an email. Happy to recommend different tools. Um, you know, most of them are pretty decent, uh, and at the end of the day, this is what you want to look at: how much traffic, not just how many keywords are we ranking for. And in this case, Baptist does really well ranking for you know as you can see, hundreds of thousands of keywords uh, because they offer so many different vast. Um, healthcare services. Um, and you want to see where the rankings are, but more importantly, how much traffic is coming uh, from, from those uh, organic listings. And in this case, uh, the estimate we did through the tools we used was over 300,000 per month in terms of um, website visitation. And that's a pretty good number. But again, everything is relative. You know, a smaller a uh, single doctor, single provider practice has different goals than a huge hospital like Health City that has over 150 doctors and uh, the whole spectrum of specialty areas, right? So, you know, the, the, the context of that for one's goals certainly varies. Some of the scores on the technical side of the website are, were not that good here because of missing page titles, internal linking issues. Uh, page speed load time, and those types of uh, issues um, can affect the website, can, it, can affect the user's experience. Again, when we talk about medical tourism and someone maybe coming from a, here, they're in South Florida, so someone could be coming from a different country in the Caribbean or Latin America, maybe the internet access isn't as good or strong or they're on the move. And if your website technically isn't up to speed, um, it, it could load slowly and be an issue and someone clicks off, clicks out. So um, 
technical site health is just as important as the front end and how that looks. Uh, digital ads. Um, in this case, we didn't give a high score to the ads, um, you know, for the reasons noted here. Um, uh, clear and consistent headlines, strong CTAs. Looks like they were using a lot of stock imagery here. Um, and um, yeah, it just didn't, it didn't stand out. Of course, you know, that pineapple icon and logo is, 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 is cool. I mean, we, we thought it was interesting and it's obviously a good branding stamp, but um, we didn't feel inspired, you know, by the creative here again. And sometimes that, that seems like a sort of subjective comment, but, um, and since again, we don't run their ads, we can't really tell you per se how effective they were in converting clicks to conversions, so to speak. But um, yeah, we, we just felt from a creative standpoint, um, there was something that could be improved upon there. Again, more as in terms of content, this would really fall under uh, pillar five, which is CRM, customer relationship management, and all of the touch points once you've gained a um, prospective customer or existing um, patient's information, email, SMS, um, they're already in your contact database. Now, how, how do you communicate through um, different um, uh, types of emails, different types of newsletters, et cetera? And in this case, you could see some examples of what Baptist shares there. And some of that is B2B, more for the doctors and the providers. Uh, social media, you know, pillar six, a good score. And again, you know, there's vanity numbers, which is, you know, the number of followers, but then there's the, it's the creativity, it's the content, it's the consistency of, of the posting. And it's it's the the branding, the way it looks. And as you can see here, is it consistent across the different social networks? Um, and in this case, um, we, we, we felt pretty good about what they were doing, not just in terms of the number of, of followers, subscribers, fans, but the uh, the pace of content, the type of content um, and and how engaging it, it was. And you can see that if you drill down into posts, and how many likes, how many shares is there, are there comments? It's, it's easy to tell when you drill down a little bit with any social media, how engaging it is. And if, if it's for your own website and own business, you'll see because people will reach out and actually ask questions about services or click through if you have links and calls to action to landing pages that, that then manifest in appointments and bookings, which is ultimately what, um, what most providers in, in this space, in this medical tourism space would be gearing for. And then uh, in this case, uh, mobile, uh, which is, you know, pillar seven, um, we gave uh, a pretty low score here because, uh, and this could apply to apps and to websites. And in this case, um, the mobile website performance, um, you know, was below the standard. Um, and uh, you can just see a lot of this gets run through third-party tools that, that measure the page load speed time. Um, and in this case, again, technically speaking, um, the numbers were all, were all uh, on, the, on the lower end side of performance. Again, these are things that hopefully uh, anyone from Baptist uh, comes on or sees this, uh, they, they can address or maybe have addressed within the last you know, bunch of months since this analysis was done. Again, this is all just, it's technical, right? Again, just like healthcare, it's technical assessment. Uh, there's going to be pros and cons for every marketing team, every web team. And uh, as you can see here, as we've presented, it's been an overall good um, assessment, but some areas that uh, leave some room for improvement. Next, and, and we've got three, I've got three in this presentation. I'd probably only go through the first two um, because I do want to open up a live look at um, one of my favorite medical tourism um, websites. Uh, it's not a destination or location I've ever been to, um, but I, I would like to share it because um, I, th I think really for when it comes to medical tourism in particular, uh, they, I put them right here with Cleveland Clinic as cream of the crop. 
and Cleveland Clinic, um, obviously a vast um, healthcare uh, company, um, doesn't just focus on medical tourism for sure. It, it, and they've got multiple touch points, multiple locations, but we're again, from a marketing standpoint, this was the audit in this case, a, 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 an excellent fully integrated digital strategy, which means you know hitting all the different pillars and touch points and doing well, uh, unparalleled high quality content uh, in multiple formats, you know, from podcasts and, and whatnot to just pure web content. Um, and again, like anyone, a, a little bit of room for improvement as we as we can see in their website design and user experience, but really excellent on the advertising side and social media. Um, an unbelievable content library, of course, a very well-resourced organization here. Um, so you would expect that they would have both internal teams as well as agencies working on all of these things and patient stories being, I would say, and from the, our health city experience, one of the biggest, most impactful forms of content is hearing true authentic patient stories. It's not like, again, it's not a stock video or a stock picture. It's not a hired actor doing a commercial, right? It's a real patient that had a real story, sometimes gut-wrenching stories. Um, again, life or death types of situations. Um, and if you heard my podcast last week with Shamari, Scott who's the chief business officer at Health City, and he tells the stories about Dr. Shetty, the visionary founder of Health City, and how his um, inspiration as a as a cardiologist working with children, saving their lives, um, his story uh, about Mother Teresa and how she helped him um, clarify his his vision and that vision leading to you know all the success that he and Health City and their parent company, Nariana Health, have had because, because of their passion, because of their vision, how that's touched the lives of, of millions of families. Um, that comes through patient stories, right? It's one thing to hear from the doctor. It's another thing to hear from the patient. And it's even another thing to see the patient giving the doctor a hug or um, some type of post-op um, testimonial, really powerful. Um, and these guys at Cleveland Clinic certainly do that well. Um, again, a, a pretty solid user experience on their website. Um, you know, the prominent site features always uh, uh, linked to useful content, good use of iconography. I think iconography is very important when it comes to um, healthcare marketing in general and, and tourism as well, because there's a lot of information and people don't always like to read. So icons of different body parts of different services um, uh, really guide people. People are very visual um, learners and, and we respond to visual cues and icons are important uh, in that space. Organic, again, uh, enormous just volume of keywords and, and traffic as, as we've been able to assess it through the, the tools that we use for SEO and organic search. Um, and uh, as we would have expected, Cleveland Clinic does extremely well in that regard. Technical site health, always a tough one, even for, it, it tends to happen with larger websites and larger companies because there's just such high volume of content and pages. So inevitably there's gonna be large numbers of these warnings and these errors. And when, when a web and marketing team has to look at 4,700 4, errors, again, it's, it's, it's like anything in life. You can't always address everything. You have to look at and make some really critical professional decisions on what the priorities are. Um, so again, we're not going to sit here and look at all 4,700 errors, but you know, if, if, if Cleveland Clinic was, was Blue Liner's client, we, we'd, we would take a look and every month we would say, okay, how much of a budget, or we would prescribe, we put at least X amount of hours, let's say 50 hours, a hundred hours a month from the web team to fixing the top structural issues and certainly sitemap errors and duplicate meta descriptions. These are issues that, that are impacting us, maybe in ways we can't fully 
feel today, but but there are some very clear paths to where these issues can cause problems and um, a negative review or just a bad user experience from someone that could have been a, a patient slash customer, but chose another route because of one of these errors or issues. So uh, again, there's always room for improvement, even for the big guys on the block. Uh, digital ads, uh, pretty decent, creative, clear and consistent headlines and colors, um, a decent use of illustrations. Um, and yeah, uh, again, nothing super inspiring, but again, when it comes to healthcare, um, you know, not all the marketing is, is, is always that exciting. Uh, you know, it's a regulatory environment. You have to be careful what you say. Um, so it's a different standard. Um, as, as opposed to tourism, which is a little more um, engaging in general. So that's what makes medical tourism and healthcare tourism interesting because it's like, it's that crossroads and it's the chance for the advertising, the creative to kind of uh, come, up, come up a notch. Social media, just, you know, tremendous volume, tremendous volume, really good execution creatively. Uh, graphically as well. So uh, really no, no complaints or um, too much advice, you know, for Cleveland Clinic there. Again, if, if there were our client, we'd want to dig in and try to find ways content wise to stay on top of and grow the, the thought leadership um, platform, continue to grow it, but they're obviously already investing quite a bit uh, in that, in that space. mobile and core web vitals as, as opposed to Baptist, they're doing a bit better here uh, on the mobile side. Um, so, so really uh, more up to industry standard. You could see when you see more green and yellow on the page versus red, uh, that's a positive uh, in this regard. And so uh, Cleveland Clinic's doing solidly there. So I'm going to stop it there. The third hospital we looked at was actually more of a local one in Cayman. And again, a local as opposed to a global um, company like Cleveland Clinic is, of course, not going to have the same resources or do as well. Um, and again, they're going to have different goals. Um, so I'm going to actually skip over this one for now and switch over and do a new screen share and uh, introduce you all to Bum Run Grad. Bumran Grad, which is in in Thailand, it's a uh, it's it's a facility that we looked at quite a bit uh, as we were working for Health City. They um, they just set a standard in a number of ways, and I think uh, as we have this up and I scroll through the website a little bit, I'll talk about and really highlight some of the best practices that they're implementing. That I think anyone who's involved in the field of medical tourism. Um, should really pay some close attention to. Um, it's um, it's a complicated space, right? When it comes to, um, of course, the one of the reasons medical tourism has become very popular is because, especially in America and the U.S., our healthcare system is is broken, broken across and in so many ways. Uh, that again needs its own webinar <laughs> or workshop to discuss. Um, but a lot of that is just the ballooning, crazy ballooning costs insurance, who's covered, and even if you have insurance, what's covered. Um, this is the reason a lot of people travel outside of the US looking for care. Um, so as you can see, the way Bum Run Grad has it, it's almost like you're on Amazon, right? It's like e-commerce in a sense where you're seeing, they're talking about numbers, they're talking about prices. That's not something you see or hear about a lot in US healthcare, because everything seems like it's magically going to be covered or paid for, which as we know, it's not. Um, people need to understand how much things cost, right? And in this case, uh, you could see they do a, an excellent job. Look at this, there's packages, right? Now this isn't in dollars, but if I was interested in, let's say, um, this cancer and gene um, screening, so to speak, they have these screenings, let's, let's, I'm not going to add it to the card, but let's learn more about this. Let's check out this screening. 
right? So again, good, good website architecture, a lot of information. So we're going to have to organize it. There's a search bar, right? There's a nice, this called breadcrumb here where you can always go back to other packages and home. I like this, right? This is kind of like, I'm sure I'm on, I'm on orbits or TripAdvisor or, you know, tells me how many other people are, are actually viewing this package right now. Again, very e-commerce, very kind of web best practices. And you can actually X this thing out here. All right. And then this is nice is that you, you can see the cost in dollars. And you can see that I can, you know, again, medical tourism, you don't know where people are coming from. So uh, if you're coming from somewhere in Europe, you can see that it's about a thousand in euro. I'm um, here in the US, so I'd like to see this price, right? So about $1,100, you could see exact good information, right? I mean, medical tourism and just healthcare in general, good communication about what's included and what's not, right? Um, more details about which genes are covered in this screening. Okay, again, good information, a video with some education. We don't have to watch it. Um, but a lot of good information here. We talked about the use of icons, right? This, after reading a lot, it's nice to see, okay, I can click a button to call or click here to send an inquiry about that in particular book or book an appointment, right? Three really good calls to action. I really do like that they're giving information in this case about what um, genes are actually covered in that uh, screening. So one could come in if you need to delve into the details. Um, you've got the pricing and now if you needed to send an inquiry or book an appointment, I really like the way their forms work. We hear a lot of complaints in healthcare about filling out forms and too much information um, or which form to fill out. Bum Run Grad does a really good job with a lot of different services they, they offer to, um, and let's just go through this experience together, right? So I can send an inquiry. Again, this is a good user experience. Not too many choices here, right? Um, and then you can you can post in some information, and um, and then submit. So not not too complex there to reach Bummer and Grad International, to reach the contact office in my in my country. So that's nice, right? It's giving me the chance to switch. And if I come here, then they would have their country of origin. I'm guessing that this is the list of countries where they actually have an office, right? And you could see that. Um, and if you're in a country like the US here that doesn't have a, a bummer and grad office, then you would just go directly to the international group. All right, so even here, if you go into a particular country, say China, they would actually have in China the different sub offices. So again, just very intelligent contact um, user experience there. Um, I want to go back to and see when it comes to medical travel, they have their travel guides. Again, good use of icons, find a doctor, send an inquiry, book an appointment, bummer on grad anywhere, which is, by the way, talk about a big trend in medical tourism and any kind of wellness, um, any type of health service. I mean, you could be um, a sleep specialist. You can be um, a physical therapist. Think about it. I mean, this applies to psychology, obviously, and um, this whole concept of 24-7 or around the clock or getting a second opinion at Health City. We actually call that part of the site second opinions and telemedicine, telehealth, right? So again, really nice use of an expand collapse because when there's a lot of information and people get overwhelmed, again, they need these kind of icons. You need this kind of navigation where you don't want to see all this content at once. But you can you can go in and say, oh, what is this? Bummer and grad anywhere. Okay, good, simple content. Tells you what they do. Um, telemedicine on demand. Good use of graphics. And um, um, 
I guess, showing in multiple languages and more q and I won't go through the whole thing, but you can just see how they're mixing in their content here and organizing it. Um, but again, when if we go back to packages, we can see what's trending. Now, let's say I had a problem with my knee and I was looking into um, like an ACL type of procedure, right? And for whatever reason, my, my local insurance or doesn't cover um, or I'm not covered, I don't have insurance, so I'm going to need to go out of the country for this. Um, and let's see how that would work. I'm just going to come in up and top and write ACL. Let's see, I don't see any autocomplete. No, there is some autocomplete here. Arthroscopic knee surgery packages. Let me go ahead and check that. So you've got some good information. Look at this, right away, I can get to an approximate cost for a, an ACL uh, surgery, right? You can see eligible patients. You can see what's included, including two night hospital stay. Again, this is this is tourism. This is medical tourism. It's not just about the procedure. It's about it's about the post op. It's about the recovery and and the the the, the physical therapy. And um, again, the destination matters. You're going to want to see what that what that place looks like and what the, what the food is like and need a bit of a concierge service. So I can actually, let's just see what it's like to book an appointment uh, for this particular package or add this package to your cart. Again, very much e-commerce-like. And regardless of the cost, right? If it's for a self-insured company and you're in HR for a self-insured company and someone in the company needs this procedure, this is great information. I mean, the fact that healthcare and wellness companies um, hesitate to put prices up because the price is going to be different for everyone based on X, Y, and Z. Uh, yes, I understand that and those complexities, but customers and people want to know information. They want clarity and good communication. And so I would say I'd put this very high up there, top two or three medical tourism best practices. Give people an understanding of what's included, what's not, and what the prices are. Even if it's, you know, yes, yeah, starting at and there could be add-ons or things that raise the price. And you could let us know about that further down the path. But if I'm working in HR and benefits for a company that's paying self-insured, we want to get prices and we want to know the estimate before we advance this conversation. And then we can have the conversation about insurance, what's covered, what's not. And there's even packages. So let's see how they're communication is uh, on that page. Again, just very good use of colors and navigation. Um, this expand collapse, they're talking about international, local brokers, all kinds of details that, that are, are very important um, that people that are in benefits departments and that deal with insurance uh, would, would understand and find very useful. Uh, as well as, oh, okay, yes, our provider's up there or not. Excellent, excellent job um, by Bummer and Grad. Always got a phone number. Again, shopping cart, very e-commerce-like. Um, they did have a section on their website. I, I don't know if I want to dig into it now, um, where um, they not only showed the prices, they actually showed the range of prices and actual customs, customers that have been there over the last 10 plus years, because these guys have been around for a while. Um, and it was like actual numbers, actual spend, not just estimated spend. And I'm sure that's still there somewhere, but I'm not going to dig in for it at this time. Um, I did just want to go back and check one more form as we're here together, really digging in and see, okay, if I'm going to actually book an appointment, uh, let's see if it actually, look, it actually carried through, very smart. It carried through that ACL procedure ID into this form. Very nice expectation here um, and guidance, right? Um, choose a preferred date or earliest date available. Very good. Um, 
uh, let's say I was again a preferred date doesn't mean I'm actually making an appointment, but let's say time of day, preferred date option two. Okay, and this could be an emergency. Let's get out as soon as we can. You can upload files. Um, uh, need ACL repair. Let's see what the next page looks like. Okay, now we want to know your name. We want to know where you're from so we can get in touch with you. Um, I'm not going to proceed further from here because we're, we're running into our time constraint. But again, bumrungrad.com, check them out, um, uh, as well as the, um, the slides that we shared uh, before uh, on, the, on the various competitors. I'm going to actually come back to the uh, deck as we wrap up here. Um, just really a summary and conclusions from what we looked at um, from the, the several sites that we audited, uh, Cleveland Clinic, again, and Bumrun grads, you know, very high end, um, great content, great navigation, great use of iconography and, and, and communication, setting expectations, giving prices, giving numbers, really credit Bumrun grad for that. And I think in medical tourism, that's essential. Uh, content, all about content. Um, and um, yeah, again, remember best practices are ever evolving, more healthcare companies, and especially in tourism, thinking about all the apps people use, like leading tourism apps, TripAdvisor, Airbnb. I think the trend is going to be more of the medical tourism will be going in that direction, looking like those tourism apps. It's about the procedure and the health care you need, but it's also about the destination, right? Again, that destination wellness concept and, and how nice are the accommodations and what happens if I want to bring my family and friends during my recovery period. So I think you'll start seeing more and more evolution and, and fusion between the best practices and tourism come over to the healthcare side. Um, so I'm going to um, say thank you from here. And uh, let's see if we have time for a question uh, or two. Okay, just looking at a log, a few questions come in. Um, do you, what? Where do you see AI's role in patient care for this industry? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. I think that's the one we'll take uh, before we wrap up here. Um, well, look, I mean, AI, I put into AI the context also of autom automation and automation in terms of, um, uh, as we looked at the website there and, and that contact form, um, how do you, um, again, um, how do you take in a patient's information and what they're interested in and use AI to anticipate the kind of questions they might have? Right. Imagine like a, a, a provider like Bumrun Grad that has all that data that I mentioned about the cost of care, the outcomes, the typical FAQs that all of our thousands of prior patients have asked. So it's going to be the top providers mining the data and information they have intelligently to anticipate the kind of questions um, and decisions, decision points that the patient would have. And, and kind of anticipating it and, and sharing the information and engaging in advance. So that's that's one example uh, right there. Same with, same with again, post-op. You've come in for the procedure, now you're in rehab. Well, what are the thousands of patients that have come before me? And what are the best practices in terms of the different milestones I'm trying to hit in my recovery and my rehabilitation? And being able to um, you know, use AI and use the data that we have intelligently to, to ping patients. Hey, you know, it's day seven, day 10, post-procedure. You might be feeling sore today. Here's three videos you can watch and three recommendations from others that have been in your position. So I think it's, the AI is gonna be very effective in terms of just mining best practices in, in healthcare and recovery in getting the best outcomes. Um, and sharing that information at the right time with the right people. Um, uh, and, and that can also tie, so 
it's kind of it's it's not completely automatic AI. It's combining with how patients are responding. Maybe it's like you're getting an automatic survey once a week on how you're feeling, because, or you're using an app that's provided by the provider, um, and based on how you're evaluating your your stiffness, your soreness, how you feel physically with whatever your condition was pre pre procedure pre treatment during treatment post treatment so i believe that'll be the most prominent use of ai it's going to be this this machine learning component and just really building intelligent models based on the way uh patients slash customers are are reporting how they feel how they're doing and what they're doing how's your diet been we prescribed you these five things Oh, you checked off. I, I'm only I'm only doing these three, but I'm still kind of breaking these two rules. Okay, well that could explain why your recovery is taking a little longer. So, again, using those data models and how patients are interacting with with their self reporting um, and engaging, and also the doctors' assessments and taking all that data, AI is is getting better and going to get better. So it's about are the providers and the apps and the websites applying that kind of user behavior and user intelligence into um, into the treatment and the um, kind of refreshed uh, healthcare advice uh, that they're getting from the doctors and from from the AI, right? So that's going to be interesting when the AI models start generating recommendations that may or may not be different than than the healthcare providers, uh, kind of more manual assessments. Um, but I think a lot of providers will will really start depending on those AI models and recommendations to take them into account um, as they're giving their advice to patients. So I hope that's helpful, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, again, I'm Arman. From Blue Liner, um, get in touch with me. It's just Arman, A R M A N, at blueliner.io. If you've been listening here on LinkedIn, thank you. We'll be doing more of these at least uh, two or three times a month. Looking to share knowledge, looking to share information, best practices from the seven pillars model, from the uh, 20 years plus of, of work we've done for thousands of clients across you know, healthcare, mm -hmm. tourism, and other industries. For Blue Liner, if you have any questions, if there's any way we can help you or your organization, or you have an entrepreneurial idea for an app, for a website um, that gets me excited, that gets our team excited, we're an entrepreneurial team um, at, at the think tank, you know, B Labs, which is the parent company for Blue Liner. So uh, it's been a pleasure to be with you all today. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for your attention and uh, be well and have a wonderful day.